Good morning, everybody. It's time to call the class to order. <laughs> time to settle down. Everybody take a deep breath. Glad you're here. Glad to see everybody in their pews, all friends. You think this is Olympics, how no nervous I am today, but when I look out, I see all my friends, and I'm really grateful. So, is anybody new here today? I don't think so. Look around, say hi to all your friends. Good morning. Uh, later on in the worship, we have the pink slips in case anybody needs to fill out prayers for yourselves or joys or your, or your friends or family. It's not just crying prayers, it's joyful prayers too. Okay, let's get ready with our call to worship. You'll find it in the bulletin and you can follow along, reading the parts in bold. Give praise to the Holy One at all times and bless your name. Let God's radiance pour out upon you and make you shine brightly in the presence of the Most High. Oh, experience and recognize the goodness of our God with all of our senses and be glad in the safety of God. Let us worship the Lord together through song. Please stand if you are able as we sing four verses of the hymn, May Jesus Christ Be Praised, number 87. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts in prayer. We will end our prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we come before you at this moment in time. We bring the concerns of the day, the burdens of our hearts, gratitude for your presence, and hope for the future. 
We gather as people in need and people with abundance, in despair and with joy, in uncertainty and with confidence. We rest in the assurance that wherever we are on life's journey, you receive us with love, compassion, and acceptance. Embolden us to be as welcoming and hospitable to one another as we gather in your name to hear your voice and to give you praise. In our time of worship, refresh us and renew our spirits. Remind us that we are part of the family of God, joined together through Christ and called to love. As a reflection of our unity, we come now to stay together, to say together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, We come now to the sharing of our gifts and resources. As an expression of gratitude, let us consider offering our time, our talents, and our resources for the good of others. The ushers will be coming around and we will stand afterwards and sing together the doxology. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for the gift of generosity. Make us bold stewards of the resources you provide, and may our ministry testify to your goodness and care for all. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'd like to call forward our children for Kiki time. Auntie Susie is going to be leading us this morning. Thank you, Auntie Susie. <laughs>
Can you guys hear me out there? Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Now you guys can hear me, huh? All right. Well, I'm going to start with a short little lesson on how to come up with cakey time ideas for those who are afraid. They can come from anywhere. So I know we talk about praying a lot, right? We've talked about reason, I mean, how to pray, the parts of prayer, and all that. And I was thinking about praying, 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 praying. And the thought came to my mind about pray always. Pray always. And what does that mean? Always pray what? But then I go, well, let's go to the Bible, because I thought there was actually a Bible verse that said pray always. Not quite. So far. Sorry. When I went to look it up, I found this in Thessalonians, and this is Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. Actually, it says, can you guys look up there? And look, you can't read mine. It says, rejoice always. Do you know what that means? Rejoice always. You know, rejoice. Rejoice. It's like being joyful and being thankful and grateful and happy. I think it means, I didn't look it up, but I'm, I think it means all those things together. And then it says, okay, this is the big one, you guys. It says, pray without ceasing. You know what that means? Pray without ceasing. You know what ceasing means? Stop. So pray without stopping. You know what else that means? Pray always. <laughs> always pray. So that's where it comes from. But it says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So it's talking about Christ Jesus and the Lord. They want us to have joy. They want us to rejoice and be joyful and be thankful and to pray without ceasing. Pray always. Calvin, next one, please. So, you guys see those words up there? No. Always, always. There's two ways of saying it. One is always, and the other one is break it up into two words. Always. That's what I want to talk about a little bit today. Praying all the ways you can pray. There's lots of ways to pray, right? You can get down on your knees and say a prayer before bedtime with your head bowed. You can sit in church with your hands together. You can walk around outside and pray within yourself. There's lots of ways to pray. And that's what I want you guys to know, that there's lots of different ways and different people all over the world and different ways pray, like this here is a prayer, prayer beads, there's 108, I'm, I'm starting to learn how to make these, I didn't make this one, this one came from the thrift store, but see there's different beads in it, you can go around and you can make up your prayer, it can be any kind of prayer, but it's to help you focus your mind and concentrate, it doesn't have to be the same one, you can pray different ones, we pray, and you just, this is to help focus, same thing like with these, these are uh, rosaries, I think the, I got these out of the thrift store too. And I think these are with the Catholic tradition, but the same thing, they're to pray with. And they have a set way, they have so many, and they go along, see the marks. But it's a way to focus and concentrate on your prayers, you know. And that's all, that's all a good thing. But I want to show you guys another really cool way to pray, okay? Now come with me. This is an active way to pray. I want you guys to help me. I want you to take this, this. Sunny, I want you to kind of lead it. Come on, Sunny, I need you here. And we're gonna make a spiral, like, like this. So we can go all the way around in a circle, okay? You see what I mean? Go round and round and round. I don't want it wide enough to walk in, like a path. Wide enough to walk in? Yeah. You're going to have to spread out a ways. You might not use the whole thing, because we can't go all around the whole church. It's pretty big. Okay, now go that way. Yeah, that way. Okay, you go around. Wait, now go around here. Sort of. <laughs> Okay, just put it down in the middle and start. Wait, wait, hold on. 
Yeah, I'm gonna time. I'm trying to make a circle, a spiral circle to walk in, like a path. Okay, back up. Go around, around, around here. There. See how it's going. No, no need to bring out anymore. That's enough. Back this up. Yeah. Everybody. Okay, back up. Back up. I is right. I'm so nervous I forgot what this is called. Labyrinth. A labyrinth. I'm like, it's not a maze. <laughs> it's called a labyrinth. Okay? Now here's how you go. Now watch. I want you to watch. Get everybody out of the labyrinth. Everybody out. I mean, some, this can be made out of anything. And it doesn't have to be a circle, but this is what I thought could fit here. So here's what you would do theoretically. Pay attention. We're going to get in a mindful, prayerful way. And then slowly but surely, whatever your prayer is, like mine is going to be that nobody trips over the labyrinth. And you can walk around and think of a prayer. Like you can praise God, thank God, think about somebody special. Normally you would do it quietly, but I'm trying to show you guys a lesson, so I'm actually talking. I guess you could sing. Maybe you could say your prayer out loud, but it's for you and you only. And you continue walking till finally you reach the middle. And you might say, thank you for your prayer, I put an offering. And I'm putting that, and you guys aren't to touch it, I'll show you after, okay? Then you walk back out, and you think what you want to think, like thank you, or... How are you going to go forward or whatever? So lots of things you can think about. We talk about that all the time, what you can pray about. Okay, you guys got the idea? Yes. Who wants to try it first? Me. Okay, go. Start over there. Okay, now back out. Next person. Anybody else want to try it? No, I'm just Huh? Okay, go. <laughs> if anybody wants to get a prize in the middle, you got to walk in the labyrinth. Only the people who walk. Everybody can. But, and I'll show you what's in there after, but everybody will get part of the prize. Yeah, you can touch it, but don't take it. Yeah, get the mana. No, you can if you want, but no picking it up. <laughs> I hope you guys are thinking good things, praying a little. Yeah, you can try again. It's like that song, Sweet Hour of Prayer. <laughs> Sweet Hour of Prayer. Okay. <laughs> okay, good job. Okay, let's clean it back up. Put it back in there and meet me over here briefly. So in here, I'm not going to give them to you now. You've got to see me after church because I don't want any, you know, do ha ha right now. But I have in here, which you guys have all somewhat blessed now, I have an array of crosses and medals, like saint medals, you know, that you guys can pick from when we get out later on today that I want you guys to keep. And what I want to remind you is, though, 
Even though I'm going to give you this so you can always think if you need, hold something in your hand and pray or focus on Jesus or focus on God or want to feel close, you know, because that's what prayer is, being close to God. But I want to tell you the most important thing is you don't need any of that. You don't need, are you listening? You don't need prayer necklaces, prayer labyrinth circles. You don't need, you just can go right inside your heart, mind, and soul, and God is there. He's just waiting. Jesus is there. He, she, whatever. The Spirit is waiting in there for you to come and talk to them all through. <laughs> Jesus, the Lord, and the Holy Spirit, they're there in you waiting for you. So you don't need all fancy things, even though they're nice and might be helpful. God is right here and is always waiting for us, okay? Let's have a little prayer. Pray, pray, pray. Pray always. Pray always. Any way you can think of pray, okay? Okay? You guys know a few ways to pray and know that it's all inside of you? Okay. God bless. Amen. Thank you. See me after church. Thank you very much. Thank you, Auntie Susie. And uh, one, another way, too, for a labyrinth, there are some online that can be finger labyrinths. So you can just print it up, and you can use your finger to follow the path. And, you know, in that way, it's something that's, you know, on a piece of paper. You could have it with you in school or at work or at home. Um, but it's also a great way to help focus. So as you go to the center, you're focusing in. When you're at the center, you're praying, focused, and then on your way back out is now you're looking outward and then going onward. So uh, thank you for introducing the labyrinth. Yeah, I, I mean, I wanted to do that. I just make one out here. One of our youth events in Tennessee, wow. we had a big yeah. canned food labyrinth, a whole like nice. big room like this where we went through the labyrinth with canned food. Yes. Pretty awesome. Yes. So if you don't know about labyrinths, I encourage you to look it up. It's really mm -hmm. just a beautiful way to pray. So thank mm -hmm. you, Auntie Susie. Thank you, everybody. All right. Now, while you lay to your rest. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's have some time for a hymn of reflection. You're invited to write down any of your prayers or joys and pass them forward. And we'll remain seated while we sing three verses of In My Life, Lord, Be Glorified. Verses 1, 2, and 3. If you have any prayers, you can pass them to the center aisle. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. We desire to glorify your name, O oh Lord. As we just sang, be glorified in our lives and in our church. That is our prayer. In all that we do, 
May we reflect your goodness and kindness so that others may know the depth of your love. In this time, as we pray for others, bring people to mind so that we can lift them to you. And when we don't have the words, Holy Spirit, pray for us. We pray for our loved ones, that they may feel your presence as they walk through each day. We lift to you those battling sicknesses or the difficult news of what is before them on their health journey. May your presence be felt in each step of this journey. We come lifting to you pr specific prayers of this congregation for the family of Glenn Sharoma, who passed away last Sunday after his battle with cancer. We also pray for Auntie Connie, who fell yesterday. Uh, we ask for your continued healing upon her lips and the other scratches she has. But Lord, we also thank you that it wasn't worse and that she is doing okay. Lord, thank you. We also pray for all the turmoil that is happening especially in Israel and in the Middle East for the hostages that are still being held, Lord, for um, just the, the battling that is happening. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for wisdom as well. Lord, we also pray for the effects of the Maui fires. We thank you for the opportunity to really remember the one year this past week to join together as a community and to make sure we don't forget um, all the devastation and those who are still struggling to rebuild. Lord, this is a long journey. And so we lift these families, these individuals, the leaders in this time that we are trying to rebuild. And Lord, help us to never forget, especially all the history that was lost. We also pray for our Keiki. We thank you for a good first week of school. Um, we ask that you continue to be with them as they uh, start this new school year, be with the parents and all of the changes and the adjustments that have had to happen. Um, Lord, we ask that you continue to uh, guide and strengthen, and um, we just pray for your perseverance through this time. But we thank you, Lord, for the start of school and for the men and Keiki in our presence. So Lord, in all of these things, may your presence be felt and known. We also pray for our community, the community that surrounds our congregation and the community we each live within. May others sense your presence through the light of Christ shining. And we pray for our world, for the places needing to rebuild, for the ways people are being treated and for the destruction that is happening. May your mighty and powerful presence break through the darkness to bring hope, peace, and restoration. And Lord, may your presence be known through us, your church, as one family through Christ. And we pray this in his precious name. Amen. For our scripture reading, we are continuing our journey through the New Testament book of Ephesians. You are welcome to follow along your bulletin as I read from chapter 4, verse 25, through chapter 5, verse 2. Let us open our hearts and minds to the Holy Spirit as we listen for the word of God. Each of you must first put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work 
doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, bawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Thanks be to God for the blessing of scripture in our lives. Well, good morning again. Um, a few years ago, there was a book series that started to become a little popular, and it was called Eat This, Not That. I remember that. Um, in it, there would be all sorts of different foods, and with each, um, uh, with each type of food, it would specify why not to eat it and what to replace it with. So we had fun reading those books because it gave ideas of what we could eat that would be healthier options for us. So it wasn't only a book of don'ts, listing only what we are not to eat, which would probably make us feel a little lost and unsure actually of what we can eat, right? You read something of, oh well, you know, I have all these things that I shouldn't eat, so what am I actually gonna eat, right? As I just chomp on my celery. <laughs> you know, there's this feeling of feeling lost and confused. Well, so it was a helpful book because it gave what you are to replace it with. So reading today's passage, I'm grateful that it isn't only a list of don'ts, right? Paul, the author, does say what we are not to do, but he also replaces it with what we are to do. So maybe instead of eat this, not that, he's saying do this, maybe not that. And that's really helpful. Some people may think that the Bible is a rule book and rules can constrict us. So then God is seen as a demanding God who puts all of these rules on people, maybe even with high expectations. And that can become confining instead of freeing. Sometimes people may feel that they have to give up all of their fun, quote unquote fun, before they follow God. So then they don't ever do that and never want to follow God. But the things that are listed here in today's passage, the things that we are to give up, are those really fun, <laughs> bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, every form of malice, right? God's not asking us to give up our fun because these things aren't really fun or healthy for us. God doesn't want us to have things that hurt us or hurt our relationships. He doesn't want those things to be in our lives. So Paul is reminding the church that the things we are not to do are harmful to the unity, the peace, and the bond of the church. These are harmful to God's family, mainly our relationships with one another. So yes, we are to get rid of it, right? There is no place for these things in the family of God, the ones who are to reflect who God is. Now, we may agree with this, 
right? But living it out can be hard. By nature, we want control, and oftentimes our pride wants us to be greater than others. So then, we want to hold on to our bitterness. We want to harbor our anger to the point where it is explosive. We want to say things that put others down so that we can look better. We've all done it in some way or another. And a big factor is that we want to feel some sort of control in a world that can often be unfair or cruel. If God only told us what not to do and what we are to get rid of, then that would basically be unrealistic. How are we even to do that on our own effort? How do I not be bitter or let my anger fester? Right? How do we even do that? If, if God only said, don't do these things, that would be a really hard way of living. But this, this is what makes Jesus such a gift. We have had someone come and walk this life with all of the struggles and unfair elements, I mean, even to the point of death. And yet, Jesus walked the way of love, showed restraint and compassion. Jesus sought God and was God in human form. That means that God came face to face so that we would have an example of how to do this. But also, we have a friend who knows how hard it can be. So all of this, what today's passage is telling us, is part of our journey towards maturity. Instead of trying harder and doing things on our own efforts alone, we first rely on the Holy Spirit as our guide and encourager. We cling to the triune God, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to walk this journey as we learn to be imitators of God. Then we can ask, well, what does it look like to be an imitator of God? Right? And thankfully, today's passage gives specific, concrete instructions for us to hold on to. And we can look at all of the positive instructions and reasons that are given. Actually, if we go through the passage, we can underline all of the positive elements. So right there at the beginning, verse 25, speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Right? That is the positive statement. The reason uh, also for putting off all fa falsehood, right, that we are members of one body, and therefore let us speak truthfully. Going on, talking about anger, we all get angry, right? And to deny our anger as an emotion would actually be lying to ourselves. So instead of just saying we can't ever be angry, our guideline is to not let our anger break our relationships, whether it's our relationship with God or relationship with others. Don't let your anger break those relationships. And also, our anger needs to be taken care of. It needs to be dealt with within a reasonable amount of time, maybe 24 hours. If we want to you know, see it as when the sun goes down, when the day ends, all anger. However, it's, it's really saying, don't let it continue on. Don't let it keep going, because when we do, when we let it continue on, it runs the risk of it getting bigger and bigger and causing more damage. Right? So don't let it, don't harbor our anger. Let's not let it carry over um, for a long period of time. And then, going on, we are to work. Right? This is in verse 28. We are to work doing something useful with our hands so that we can provide both for ourselves and have the opportunity to be generous with others, especially those in need. So in other words, use your skill for good and the good of others. These are all the positives that the scripture is pulling out. Continuing on in verse 29, let your speech build others up, being beneficial to them and helpful according to their needs. 
So if we are to speak, let's speak the positive. Then in verse 32, be kind, be compassionate, forgive. Right? These are all outward actions as we are in relationship with one another. And for us, we are to continue to follow God, to walk in the way of love. And there's this little part in, verse, in chapter 5, verse 1. As dearly loved children, know that you are dearly loved. You are God's child, right? Each of us is God's child, and so let's live into that. Let's walk into that and know that you are dearly loved. And when we look back on this passage, look at all of those positives, these are here to help us to grow and to care for our relationships with one another. When we are at peace with one another, walking together in the same direction, growing and encouraging each other as we grow in our faith, there is goodness there. We can enjoy the little journey a little more and walk with hope. So biblical instructions aren't restrictive. They're actually there to guide us as we learn to walk in the way of love so that we can then bring glory back to God. And why do we do that? So that others can see the goodness of God and then they can live a life that glorifies God and others can see them glorifying God and living in God's goodness, right? And the cycle continues and continues. So when we are followers of God, we are kind and compassionate, building others up and being generous. And people will take notice of that. The world could use more of, of that, right? There's already enough bitterness, anger and rage, slander and malice. We don't need to contribute to it. But we can offer something different, something better. So these guidelines, these biblical instructions from God uh, and things that God gives us are like bumpers in the bowling lanes. <laughs> They're there to help us hit the pins and succeed. And sometimes bumpers can be seen just for beginners or for kids. But if I have the opportunity you know, today to use bumpers, I would have no shame in getting help and using that extra help, right? <laughs> it's no fun to have a bunch of gutter balls in your game. And yes, we work to get better and adjust so that we don't keep having gutter balls, but the bumpers are like God's grace. It is there. It is a gift. You don't have to pay. You don't have to earn those bumpers. It is there to help you. And these instructions from God are part of God's grace. God doesn't want us to keep getting gutter balls, <laughs> to keep feeling like we're failing or we can't ever get a strike. So these instructions are not there to bring us down or make us feel bad about ourselves, but instead they are there to offer some extra help some guidance as we take this journey of life as, as Christians, as followers of Christ. Right? We can use the bumpers. <laughs> There's no shame in that. And these instructions are there for us to use for our benefit and the benefit of our relationships with one another. So then I started to think, maybe the church is like a bowling alley. <laughs> I'm a very visual person, and I actually had a lot of fun picturing this. So I personally have really good memories of bowling, right? because you usually go with others, and it's a time to hang out while also maybe getting some exercise, I don't know, doing some activity with others and being able to hang out. So you talk story, right, while you're waiting for your turn. But then for me also, I associate it with good food. And plus, I mean, what sport can you eat between frames or while you're waiting? <laughs> you go bowl, you go back and you eat <laughs> until it's your turn. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good sport. Um, and so also for bowling, I found that people tend to be kind of all at the same skill level, 
which is more on the not so good side <laughs> of the spectrum. I mean, of course, there might be some who really excel, but we all tend to kind of be mediocre. <laughs> so when someone gets a strike or even a spare, we are all celebrating, right? Even the person who got it, as if we're surprised, like, I did it. <laughs> Uh, but we are encouraging each other as we play. We're also not getting down on ourselves if we have five frames of gutter balls. <laughs> no, instead we get up and we bowl in the next frame. But then maybe we could use the bumpers <laughs> that are there to help us. So today's passage is encouraging the family of God to go bowling, <laughs> um, to enjoy time together, right? to care for each other, to build each other up, to be kind, maybe even to eat good food together, right? <laughs> but ultimately, to be Im imitators of God. And people will notice it. People will want to be part of it. That is how we share the light and love of Christ. And it first starts with us, individually and within our church family. So let's continue to walk in the way of love, building each other up. Let's use those bumpers and see God's instructions as a gift, a way for the Holy Spirit to guide us as we walk with others. The journey is meant to be done in community. And these instructions, help us to succeed, to succeed by glorifying God, right? It also helps us to enjoy and to celebrate as the family of God. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for your guidance and the ways in which you teach us how to better reflect you. Thank you for being with us on this journey and for placing others around us so that we can learn and grow together. Help us to see how we can strengthen our bond or encourage one another more. Open our eyes to your ways and may we continue to walk in the way of love, the calling to which you have called us to. We keep our eyes focused on you, Jesus. We put our trust in you and we pray all these things in your name, amen. We will remain seated as we sing three verses of Open My Eyes That I May See. As we close our worship service today, we are, we are reminded how wonderful it is to be in community together with one another on this journey of faith that we're on. We are one body and one in Christ.
And for the life of our Ohana, of our Ohana, please see the worship bulletin for announcements, and there's quite a bit, two pages worth, I see. So please pay attention. We have a lot of events coming up. Uh, does anybody else have any announcements? Kiki? <laughs> never doing this again. This is it. I'm done. And immediately after this one, I said to Carol, I would do this again in a heartbeat. <laughs> that, that basically says the whole story. We had 13 children, um, seven of our church, church members here on board to help, and four um, presented from the community. We had It was a lot of fun. I think the kids had fun. Thank you, Kiki. Mm -hmm. Any other announcements out, Joyce? Thank you, Joyce. They were delicious yesterday. Okay. Thank you. And yes, thank you to the amazing crew. Thank you, Kiki, for leading that event. It really was. It was a great event. So thank you. <laughs> a couple other announcements. Oh, speaking of yesterday, there are some extra dental kits. Um, and so if you could, uh, I mean, if you have, they are for kids. So if you have any kids in your life, some kid you know, toothbrushes, toothpastes, or if you like the kid ones, feel free to take a dental kit with you. Uh, but those are one of the donations that we got as well. So that was a real blessing um, for our community. Um, also, we do have a sign up in the back for, as a reminder, for lay leader, flowers, um, cakey time, snack, but we, we have a lay leader for next week. Uh, however, the rest of the sheet is blank, so there's lots of spaces for us to sign up, get your first date that you want, uh, so that's in the back. Um, we also have a flyer in the back, on the backboard of um, the Hakalao Bond Dance that's coming up. I believe it's this coming Saturday. So that information's on the backboard. 
Um, in our bulletin, we do have two memorials that are listed, one for Eugene. It is open to our church family, so please take note of the date of, for Eugene's service. And then also um, Ella Mishiro's, um memorial or funeral is happening in September. That is an open service, and it's happening here. So more information in your bulletin. Lastly, we uh, want to support Holly White, who has been doing a great job um, in rehab and in gaining skills for life and so for her journey. And so as a church family, we want to encourage her and mail her a card. So uh, there will be a card outside on the table if you want to sign that. Or there's also just some blank note cards if you want to write her an encouraging note. You're welcome to do that, and we'll mail that off to her. Uh, she's been in on Oahu this, um, all this time, so we want to send our love and aloha to her as well. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to just add, I talk to Holly practically every day, more than I talk to her when she's around here, actually. But it's nice. She's doing very well, so thank you. Um, okay, so I want to thank everybody for, first of all, just being here and participating in our Sunday morning worship, but also to get here every Sunday, a whole lot of activities go on and parts are played, and I want to thank everybody who participates and does what they do, and I can't go into names because there's a lot. <laughs> and what Mr. Noki always said, you can't name just one person because you might leave somebody out, you know. But in saying that, I'd love to thank, uh, I think, Kathy for the flowers. Kathy, uh, did you do the flowers? Yeah, they're beautiful this morning. Pastor Kara Ann for leading us so beautifully. Anthony, maestro extraordinaire. And as I said again, all of you for coming today. So we will close our worship today, singing our closing hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, hymn number 350, verses 1, 2, and 4. Let us gather around the chapel for our closing circle and benediction.
We are the family of God. We are one ohana through Christ, and that is such a gift. So as we walk this journey, we do so knowing that we're not alone, but also that we are contributing to others' journey as well. Let us continue to live and shine the light of Christ as we go forth. And as we do, may we go with the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.